myself Shaptaporni from Bioline. Today we will discuss about thyroid gland. It is my fifth video on endocrine system. My uh, previous videos are in the description box below. You may also check out those videos. See, for any gland, it is very important to know their location. Our thyroid gland is situated just in front of our neck. See, at this position, our thyroid gland is situated just below the larynx. What is larynx? Larynx is the structure inside which your voice box is situated. So, let's draw the structure of the thyroid gland. See, if this is our larynx, then the thyroid gland is situated just below the larynx. Okay. Like this. The gland is situated. So this is our thyroid gland. Okay. See. This is the larynx. And this is our thyroid gland and you can also find the trachea below okay so the location of larynx is just below the sorry the location of thyroid gland is just below the uh, larynx and thyroid gland is known as a bilobed gland why why is it called a bilobed gland? Because it has bi means two. It has two lobes. See, this one is one lobe and this one is one lobe. And these two lobes are joined by a bridge-like structure. See here, this is a bridge-like structure which is known as isthmus. Okay, this this bridge-like structure joining the two lobes of the thyroid gland is known as isthmus. And sometimes you may also find an extension of the uh, thyroid gland just above the isthmus. So this portion, this upward portion, the extension of the thyroid gland just above the isthmus is known as pyramidal lobe. Okay, because it looks like a pyramid. Pyramidal lobe. So, these are the main um, structural characteristics of a thyroid gland. And you, you can find that it looks like a butterfly. Now, this is the dorsal view. Okay, dorsal view. And if you uh, see the ventral view of the thyroid gland, what will you see? You will see that, see, if it is the ventral view, this is the trachea, the uh, the ventral view of the trachea. And this is the ventral view of the thyroid gland. You can find four small glands just behind the thyroid gland. Okay. It is the dorsal view and it is the ventral view. You can find four small glands. Just behind the thyroid gland. This is the thyroid gland. And these four small glands are known as parathyroid glands. Okay. These are the parathyroid glands. So, this is the structure. Now, coming to the hormones. What hormones are secreted by our thyroid gland and also by our parathyroid gland. In your syllabus, only thyroid hormones are there. See, our thyroid gland secrete main three hormones, okay? T3, T4 and calcitonin. T4 is also known as thyroxine. This is the main thyroid hormone, T4. Okay. T4 is the main thyroid hormone and it is also known as thyroxine. And other two hormones are T3 and calcitonin. 
and the hormone secreted by parathyroid gland is parathormone. Parathormone. Now we will discuss the functions of T4 in details, but uh, T3 also functions like T4, but the function of calcitonin is somehow different. It regulates the blood level of calcium. Okay. Whereas the parathormone also uh, regulates the calcium level in our blood. But both hormone works in different way. So now coming to the main two hormones T3 and T4. Mainly the T4 of our thyroid gland. But before that, we have to know the histology of the thyroid gland. See, histology is the, now, see, uh, like all other glands, our thyroid gland has a uh, capsule, okay? And the unit of our thyroid gland is known as, unit of our thyroid gland is known as thyroid Follicles, okay? Follicles. So, if we draw the structure, we can find that. Let's draw the structure first. See, these round structures are the unit of the thyroid follicle. They are known as thyroid of the thyroid gland and they are known as thyroid follicles. You can see that these thyroid follicles are suspended, okay? These are suspended in the connective tissue material of the gland. These are the nucleus actually, the nucleus of the cells, okay? Now, this is the capsule. Think this is the capsule of the thyroid gland and uh, this is the connective tissue material of the thyroid gland. Now, And let me draw some other structures also. Okay. Now let's discuss. See, this is the capsule of our thyroid gland. Now, our thyroid gland consists of two main types of cells. Number one is chief follicular cells. And number two is para follicular cells okay now see i have already told that it is the unit of our thyroid gland known as thyroid follicle tf let's uh, write tf so you can see three thyroid follicles are here the thyroid follicles are encircled by a t a cell layer and what are these cells? These are the chief follicular cells. See, this is one chief follicular cell. This is one chief follicular cell. So, the thyroid follicle is encircled by the chief follicular cells. And inside the uh, thyroid follicle, you can see a cavity. Okay. This is called lumen of the thyroid follicle. And inside this lumen, what is present? Inside this lumen, colloid is present. This is the colloid. And these cells are the chief follicular cells. Okay. So, in this colloid, this chief follicular cell secret their T3 and T4 hormones. So, from these cells, T3 and T4 hormones are secreted into this lumen. Okay. Now, coming, so, this is the chief follicular cells. Now, coming to the second type of cells, parafollicular cells. See, in between the um, thyroid follicles, you can see some green colored cells. These are the parafollicular cells, okay? So, these green colored cells are known as parafollicular cells. And you can see this. This is the blood vessel, okay. So, this is the 
this is the histology of our thyroid gland. Now coming to the hormone secreted by different kinds of cells of our thyroid gland. Now coming to the T4 or thyroxine hormone C. Always remember the main component of our T4 or thyroxine hormone is iodine. Okay. So what are the main functions of our T4 hormone? The main function of our T4 hormone is regulation of body metabolism. So it is evident that if there is a over secretion of T4 then that will lead to higher metabolic rate. Okay. And if there is a down secretion of T4 that will lead to low metabolic rate. Now coming to, this is the first function. And as we know metabolism leads to release of heat in our body. So, the second function of thyroxine is to regulate our body temperature. Okay. It regulates our body temperature. Now, coming to the third function. The third function of thyroid is ossification of bones and the fourth function is general body growth regulation and the last but not the least it also regulates our mental development okay so from these five functions the regulation of bmr the regulation of body temperature Influencing the ossification of bones and regulating our general body growth along with mental development. It is very evident that our thyroxine hormone is very much important not only for our physical growth but also for our mental development. So what will happen if there is a hypo or hyper secretion of these hormones in our body? See, we know that if there is hypo or hyper secretion of any hormone, that may lead to serious consequences. So, first talk about the hypothyroidism. Under hypothyroidism, we will find three diseases. What are those? Simple goiter. Second one is cretinism and third one is myxedema. Okay. Now, hypothyroidism means where thyroxine hormones T3, T4 are secreted in less amount. Okay. Hypothyroidism. Hypo means less. Now, what happens in simple goiter? In simple goiter, you can find, you will see a a lump in a, in your neck. The thyroid gland is swollen. Why is it swollen? Because we have already learned that the T3 and T4 hormone needs iodine to be produced. So iodine is the main component of thyroid hormones. So if in your diet or in your food there is iodine deficiency, what will happen? Your blood cannot intake, uh, sorry, your thyroid uh, gland, glandular cells cannot intake the required iodine from your blood. So, it could not produce the required amount of thyroid hormones in your body. And that will lead to the swelling of your thyroid gland, which will be visible as a lump in your neck. And that is known as simple goiter. So, simple, the main reason for simple goiter is Iodine deficiency in your food. That is why what happens in hilly regions where the soil is, soil contains very less amount of iodine. The food also contains less amount of iodine. As a result, 
the persons living in the hilly regions uh, suffer from this simple goiter because their uh, the iodine content in in their blood is very low so their thyroid gland cannot produce required amount of t3 and t4 from that iodine okay now coming to the second disease cretinism this occurs mainly in children whereas myxedema occurs in adults in children the hypothyroidism causes cretinism which has two main symptoms first decreased mental growth and also decreased growth of body okay whereas in case of myxedema in adults you will find there is very much sluggishness hmm. and the face and hand of the person gets swell okay so these are the and in simple goiter i have already told lump in thyroid gland so these are the symptoms of the hypothyroidism now coming to the hyperthyroidism okay so uh, now uh, answer me one question see i have told that iodine is the main component of thyroid hormones so in hilly region people uh, there is lack of iodine in their food so uh, what will be the uh, preventive measure obviously you may eat the iodized salt iodized food in your diet okay that is how you can prevent the simple goiter now coming to the hyperthyroidism hyperthyroidism means where t3 and t4 are secretion of t3 and t4 is increased hyper means high or over secretion okay now the main disease under this hyperthyroidism is exophthalmic goiter see see exop means outward and ophthalmis ophthal means exo means outward and ophthalmic means eye so and goiter we have already told that goiter is the lump in our thyroid gland so in exophthalmic goiter what happens due to over secretion of t3 and t4 hormones your thyroid gland gets swelled up okay that is why like simple goiter you will also find a go a lump in visible lump in your neck region but along with that in exophthalmic goiter what happens your ophthalmos means eyes gets protruded out okay so that is why it is known as exophthalmic goiter so in exophthalmic goiter along with the visible lump in your neck region your eyes also gets protruded so along with that also there is the um, increase in uh, your blood pressure and heart rate and also increase in your bmr so these are the main um symptoms of your exophthalmic goiter now with this our syllabus of thyroid gland is complete so okay so with this we come to an end of our today's learning if you find my content useful so please like share and subscribe to my channel i post videos regularly on different topics of class 9 to 12 and also undergraduate level on different topics of biology so if you like it please like share and subscribe thank you for watching and happy learning